hold that knee now. Probably shouldn't touch it because I just touched it. That's all right. Uh, that's 1.6 meters. <laughs> We're good. Um, <laughs> before we start the show, I just want to do a quick shout out to anybody that's working in the medical field at the moment. Nurses, doctors, scientists, people that are helping out with all the craziness that's going on, and teachers. Marty and I like teachers a lot. We met working at a school as educators. Teachers, good on you. Is your mum or dad a teacher? Are you a teacher? Give yourself a pat on the back or say to your mum or your dad or your uncle or your friend, good on you, because teachers a legend. are epic. Um, we're back. Let's kick the graphics. Welcome to another episode of the Unicorn Circuit, your weekly dose of car news. I've needed to sneeze for like the last <laughs> however long and it just it won't turn into a sneeze. Does anyone know that feeling? There's got to be a word for that feeling. Can someone look it up? There would be a German word for it because they've got a word for... Hiesche Schnauschen. You're going to be Hiesche Schnauschen? No. No. No, I don't. There's a word in some Sneezes. countries of when you your pillow's warm and you flip it over and then you lie your cheek on the cold bit, there's a word for that. Do you know what that is? That's, That's your nose. That's nasal blue ball. Is, oh, um, okay. And there's also a word for, uh, I think it's like in the it's Netherlands horrible. or something, when you're inside and you're warm, but outside it's raining and snowing and cold, that feeling you get, you know that feeling? There's a word for that. Sometimes the English language lets us down. Anyway, we got a you know, huge a word, show. You know there's a word for when the rain hits the hot concrete, um, hot concrete ground, when it's been hot in Australia and then it rains, which doesn't happen much. What's that called? Called perfume. Is it really? Yep. There you go. Yep. Martin, tell us about your t-shirt, then let's kick oh, in. This is the new Mod Max inspired Mighty Cumberland's t-shirt by The Art of Fox, um, a friend of ours, and you can get it on our shop. You can get Freaking it right awesome. now. It's Mod Max, it's anatomically correct, has four pipes on that side, three on that side, but there's actually four because one's hidden and we had to move it to clear the clutch master or the brake master, I can't remember, it was a while ago. Um, it's pretty epic. Love it. Epic. Uh, let's, we, we got a huge show Massive. this week. Massive. Massive. The biggest show we've ever done. Um, let's just dive into the news. This week, I'm kicking off the news with V8s, people. I oh, are. Yeah. They're not dead yet. They're not really? dead. They're still going much to the excitement one. and choir singing of Mustang fans. I'm going to buy the one next Monday. Ford Mustang not is Mustang. due to get a V8 hybrid. It's what? due in 2022. Awesome. It's going to be a V8. They're updating it. They're also trying to make it sharp so it steers excellent. I'm making the news efficient today. That's all you need to know. The Mustang know steers more? efficiently into the gutter. Google That's it. What they mean? There it is. Oh. That's Ford Mustang coming soon. What do you got, Mark? We're going um, one for one. Speaking of big thirsty cars, well, hybrid not so thirsty. Oil prices. Look them up. They're doing some weird stuff. They're not doing ups and downs, they're just doing downs and they're through that line, that imaginary line that says zero. They're through the bottom of the line that says zero. A month or two ago, I remember what? paying about $1.90 a litre. Now it's down to 80 cents. It's the, certainly in Australia, it's the lowest price for petrol it's been in like a couple of decades. I haven't bought petrol because there's nowhere to go. So of course, like there's no demand, right? No one's buying it. But oil prices, crude oil, bulk prices, the stuff they pull out of the ground in Texas or any OPEC country, whatever that stuff is, is not worth anything and the problem That's they're having crazy. the problem is there's nowhere to store it so you can go you can buy as much oil as you want you can produce as much crude as you want but if no one's actually burning it and turning it into co2 and all the other bad stuff where does it go it goes into storage what happens when you run out of storage you're in trouble. You gotta pay for you more. You gotta storage. store it. Well, well you gotta no stop storage. pumping it out of the ground. Well, that's the problem. So you stop pumping it out of the ground. What happens? Everybody who works on that particular oil rig, that company goes bust. What happens when heaps of those companies go bust? And in well, you then know, demand goes up. Fingers crossed. When this is all over and the and everything sort of returns to at least somewhat normal, it's going to be huge demand for it. So at that point, our oil price is going to go crazy. And is that where electric cars are going to have their day? Or are we in some weird in between quagmire where it's actually more expensive now to run an electric car? than it is to run a petrol car or a diesel car where you're paying so, where energy is so cheap now. Let's make ourselves better, uh, feel better and talk about the new Golf R, Martin. Uh, Golf R is, was due late 2020. Now it's not going to be here because of this crazy pandemic that's going on. So maybe it's due next year now in 2021. Is Did it going to be mild Did hybrid? That? Did you hear that? Is it going to be that mild hybrid, Martin? Nobody like people, cares. Like people thought? 
No. No, it's not. It's not. They're using the same EA triple eight engine, two litre turbo petrol, four cylinder, mild hybrid. Nope. Is anyone else out Manual? there surprised? Nope. That Zero to 100, wagon, though, this is pretty good, though. They're just staying the same with it. What? This is pretty good for, I mean, talking petrol. Zero to 100 in 4.6 seconds, which is about like half the speed that my Golf does so it in. So it's like slower than a Tesla, basically. Um, but it's been testing around the Nürburgring. It's got a big wing on the back of it, Martin. A bigger wing that people where's haven't the, seen before. Where's the Eagle? And some shiny wheels. Um, that's, that's all there is to say about it. Where's people are excited Eagle? about that. They're but, not. No one cares. Where's the e-golf, man? This is old, old People news. People are making that. Other random news. The yeah. Golf was the best-selling car from Volkswagen. Guess what it is now? Tiguan. Tiguan. Yeah, SUVs. People love SUVs. Crazy. Why People they don't love care it. about going fast? Lexus have got some seven-seat wanna... SUV coming out. That's exciting. Is it? Yeah, no, no, it's not. It's not exciting at all. Is it electric? Full drive? Does it do zero to 100 in two and a half seconds? Does it do like a 10 second quarter mile? Oh no, wait, I'm thinking of Teslas. Oh wow. Oh. Wow. Martin, got any more news before I start talking about more petrol cars? No, well, there's no, because you can't drive anywhere at the moment and you can't, you don't need petrol and you don't need fuel. All you right. You certainly don't need a Mark 8 Golf. Well, I'll continue with the news then. Martin, we're talking mid-life updates. Whoa. Now you see what happens, you know, so a Golf will come out. Yeah. Then they'll change some trims yeah. on it. Then they'll Wait, do a you're final about edition. People or cars? Then they'll do like a different colour, and Don't then they'll do a different do whatever. The conspiracy is, Martin. On their lives? Yeah, of course they do. It's a With midlife golfs? crisis. No, they don't buy golfs. What do they buy? Mustangs. Red. They do. They they, <laughs> they they trade in a golf GTI for a Mustang. They were destined to fail. Now, listen. Um, so, midlife update of a Kia Stinger. Oh, cool. No, it's got Kia more Stingers power, are cool, man. They're cool. It's got they? more power. Are they cool? But they haven't changed anything. Now, they reckon that it's going to make more power because of its exhaust system, but Ooh. I reckon someone's just plugging a laptop and going, hey, it's a midlife crisis update. Just give it a few more kilowatts so that we can get some advertising, maybe a few trim bits, because yeah. everything's the same. Do you know what? That, I know how that meeting went. In Korea somewhere, they sat around a table and said, hey, you guys cool if we just page up a bit? And marketing went, yeah, that'll help. Thanks, boys. And then the IT department or whoever the engineers went downstairs and Paid got the laptop. three times. One, two, three. It's got 10% more duty cycle. How much more power does it make? 12 kilowatts and 54 newton meters. Allegedly, or Thanks. possibly we're making that up. I anyway, made all that up, but that's pretty much how the meeting would go. I mean, if we were talking about the MR2 or something, that's how the meeting would go. Yes. Except it's not really Except about marketing. Except it wouldn't be a meeting, would it? It wouldn't be a meeting. I'd just do it. Because I wouldn't be there. I'd be doing something <laughs> I cared about. Martin, have you <laughs> got any news? I've got one more piece golf. of news. Because no, this is a big me. one. All right. So, Focus RS. As you know, Marty and I built our own. And by built our own, we went to Germany to the factory and built as much as we could. Lots They're of it fast, comes man. in like the, you know, like a motor comes in a box. We didn't fast. build that. It just it Sharp, arrives there. Fast. Anyway. Techie. Martin, it's dead. What? There's what? Allegedly, there's been some reports but that the Focus RS is dead and it's not going to happen allegedly. anymore. Allegedly. Allegedly. for sure. Now, Ford Australia is going, nah, -uh, I don't think so. It is still coming here, but not until potentially 2024. A long time away, That's right? It's four years away. Yeah, it's a long time away. Here's the thing. Apparently, it doesn't meet. So the next one's going to be mild hybrid. 2.3 litre, turbocharged, all-wheel drive, mild hybrid. Sounds good to me. Apparently, it doesn't meet the 2021 European emission standards, even with hybrid. Now, what's required to meet those is what they say, a fleet average of CO2 of 95 grams per kilometre. Now, I'm not a scientist or an engineer, but I imagine that would mean that 95 grams worth of stuff comes out per kilometre that you drive. That's a Mars bar worth of weight of... It's, it's a big brown log. It's hard mountain. to get your head around that, yeah. isn't it? Well, if, if that is how this works, it may not, and I'd love to be corrected because I'd like to be educated as well. Now, the third generation Focus RS recorded 175 grams for, per kilometre. Now, if what I'm understanding is correct, that means if you go 10 kilometres, then 1.7 kilos of CO2 is coming out of your car. Is that right? Or is it not weight? Is it space? I don't know. Someone please tell me. The point is, it doesn't meet the standards, even with hybrid. Ford Australia reckons they are going to be able to meet the standards. But this is what's going to happen. Things are going to tighten down, tighten down, tighten down until it's, it's just electric cars everywhere. And you but know electric what? cars are still burning coal. They're well, not electric at all. Is... You said that just to try and bait me. Um, the other thing is, like, there's, there's engineering limits of where that stuff can end, right? Like you can only squeeze so many kilowatts out of a bit of metal with some pistons in it or a rotary, except no one does rotaries. You know, like pistons in it. There's only so much you can do and you're going to make emissions. It's yes. just going to happen. And at yeah. some point, the regulations... And imagine the meetings between the regulators and the car companies. Yeah. Oh, well, we want less emissions. The car, we, we can't do it. Because we'll they want to advertise out. the cars exactly. and market them as going faster and faster. And yep. we're at the pinnacle, I reckon, yep. of what petrol engines are yep. going to do. 100%. Mark 8 Golf R 
four cylinder, two litre, zero to 104.6 seconds. Like that's insane. That's you know crazy. when it gets to the point where they've worked out technology where cylinder heads can like morph and change and valves can morph and change and stuff like mechanically, yes. you know we're at the end of it because they're like, we can't do anything else with pistons. We can't do anything else with, you know, cylinder temperatures and boost and all that. Yep. Like you even know with the fact that everyone uses ethanol now and the cars don't ping, they just break. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's, we're here people, but it's a good time to be here as well. It's an exciting Enjoy time it. to be here. And, and what I'm saying, I mean, obviously you can get more out of the engine. So, you know, we, we tried to make my Golf daily drivable, zero to hundred in under three seconds, but this is 4.6 seconds with warranty. Yeah. And servicing in factory. Yeah. This is this is not like my car that might go ting ting ba boom. This is like, hey, we'll give you warranty. Yep. Crazy. That's the news. It's time to Big jump news. into is that even legal? Now I don't know about you, but I like to drive a car, I like to eat a kebab, I like to have a drink of ginger beer. Yeah. And no that. doubt my friend Martin does as well. Martin, oh, yeah. do you like to drive a car? Yep. Do you like to have some ginger beer? Yep. Do you like to drink some food? Yeah. It's illegal! Drink food? Drink yes, food. it's illegal. What? In Cyprus, it's illegal to drink and drive and also illegal to eat and drive. Illegal to kebab and drive? Yep, in you Cyprus. cannot eat in your car. It's true. You're not allowed to. That makes and sense. And you know what? That makes in sense. In Japan, it's you not would... illegal, but culturally it's illegal, isn't it? Well, no one would do because it. Because people don't eat in their car because it, it's gross. It would be like they also don't take no their festy on. shoes in their car. Well, like, it would be we... like driving around with no pants on. And people would be like, why are you doing that? Like, you can still drive around, but you've got your, your willy out. Thing is, in Australia, I mean, on a motorbike, you don't have to wear anything except a helmet. You can be completely naked. You no, might you get done for whatever. Yeah, you get done um, for But you could wear a bit of dental floss around the eye of your willy like, or something. You could wrap. <laughs> this little guy around it or something. But uh, in Australia, a lot of people go down to the RSL. That's like the kind of pub. They go into the urinals where it seems that people urinate anywhere except for in the trough. And then they walk around and then they just go home and they walk into their house and just lie in their bed and sit on their couch. In Japan, no way. Everyone's no. wearing their Crocs. No. You don't wear your festy shoes outside. Yeah. Now, My mirror I, came with a little tray underneath the, the, um, the seat. That's for your shoes. Really? Yeah, except my shoes don't fit. I remember first time I, I drove a um, R34 GTR in Japan and I got in the guy's car and he was just crumbled. He was just like, eh, eh. and I was like, what? And he's like, can you please take your shoes off? Come on, man. And I was just like, I was, I was a bit green. I didn't know. Um, anyway, so I've started taking my shoes off at home because I also found yeah, out that, that like virus spread and all this craziness that's going on, uh, most of the time the virus is transferring it's on shoes more oh. than it's on your shirt or anything else. Wow. Take your shoes off, leave them at the door. If you think it's weird, just pretend it's JDM. As soon as it's JDM, everyone thinks it's great. Martin, what's next? Um, next is my crap car. My crap car is the awesome part of the unicorn circuit where you show us your crap cars. And we are always treated with the crappest of cars that also make them awesome. Oh, you double checking? No, I'm just double checking. There's one point, it's 1.6 meters, we're yeah, good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Are uh, the crappest of crappest crap cars. Car, um, this, this, and what I love about this as well is the international flavor that we're often treated to because We've seen VN Commodores before, we've seen VP Commodores before, except we haven't because no one sent one in. But what we haven't been to is Norway to see this awesome 530D BMW. Check it out. Hello again, Unicorn Circuit, and welcome to my crap car. Today we have my E39 530D. It might look nice, but don't let that fool you. It is not doing so well. As you can see here, here as well, it's not doing it well. This, this I got on the sticker. That does not work. I know why, it just doesn't. As you can see, I've tried to do my own rest job, but I think I need to repaint this part. This door is also rusty. The paint has fallen off here, so I need to do that again. Oh wait, it's not, it's not, paint, the paint's not fallen off. Alright, forget that. Might need to buy a new door. The covers for this, they fell off. So I have replaced them with tape. It still works, don't, don't worry about it. It's because in new brakes, they're a bit rusty now because I s tried to wash the car, but... <laughs> eh. 
I've also done some rust job here, as you can see. Um, it's okay, a bit, a bit of overspray, but that's nothing. This thing is uh, it's in there. This one is still there. As you can see, I'm now under the car, and my exhaust has been exhaust, and my flex section has. Well, it's it's shot. So I've been trying to, you know, do some re budget repairs because I'm quite literally broke. So yeah, there's some exhaust paste. Try to seal up the exhaust leak. Because yes. Uh, and here, there's some bad uh, oil leak. I have no idea what this is, but the previous owner put it on. It doesn't work, but yes. The rest of the underside is quite nice. I need, I need to also replace the rail linkage arms in the back. That's a pain in the ass because of my air suspension. Inside it's actually quite nice. The seats are soft and comfy. Heated steering wheel which is nice up here in the north. I wish I could have a manual but automatic is what I got. The center heater thing here is well one of the buttons is duct tape on and the other one is fall, uh, fallen off. That speaker is blown. I got myself a little Angry Bird, some air fresheners and a dash cam. All the essential items. To open the hood, simply pull this, but uh, there's a bit of play. Still works. And here is the engine. It's big, it's strong, and it shoots black smoke. So I do got angel eyes, but it's a bit uh, uh, yeah, sketchy. It's been literally tapped into the old parking lights. Most of the stuff inside here works anyway, so that's all good. But I do also have a coolant leak, <sighs> which is nice. But hey, it doesn't overheat, so it's good. Sounds like a truck. Yeah, and also an idle sun even. That doesn't work correctly. It's like an estimate of how much I got. That shows way off. So the only thing that works is this. Thanks for watching the Unicorn Circuit and my cat car. Thank you very much, so Norway. Good. Thank you for being an amazing country. Thank Thanks you for, for your black through. metal. Some epic metal comes out of and Norway. They're famous crap for it. BMW. Is that BMW probably worth heaps more money here, eh? Well, it that's would. the funny thing. Cars are worth lots more money in different places depending on where they are, aren't that makes they? Makes sense. You know, crazy. Think about a mirror in Japan, worth two hundred dollars. Yeah. Think about it. Although over now here. they're worth money. It's probably hey, worth ten and grand. And because the import rules has changed in Australia, now people are buying mirrors, dude. Really? I'm seeing them. Oh, They're are you disappointed? In. Do you feel like it's your thing and now everyone wrecked it? Nah, because it's always about it's always about the return on investment, all the work that you put in and the effort you go to and you yes. end up with this cool thing. It, no, no mirror that you buy from Japan will ever be this mirror. That's true. Yeah. That's a good way of thinking yeah, about it's it. It's pretty good. Uh, next on the Unicorn Circuit is Tin Foil Hat Cat. <laughs> Now, before we dive into Tinfoil Hat Cat, we do have an announcement to make, Martin. We're doing something everyone else has been doing for ages. We've never done it. We're going to do an email. We're yeah. going to, people can sign up to an email. Yeah. They can go, you know what? We're going to send out some stuff that's like a little bit of behind the scenes, a little bit of news, yep. a little bit of maybe yep. a little... A little bit of a link to a discount. That sounds good. You um, get pinged constantly in this current age with notifications of stuff. So often it's stuff you don't care about. Ours so is going to be good. It's just, it's just rubbish. And people just pump you with, with crap all day and it's not interesting. And we thought, you know what? I would like it if once a week or however long offer it was, my email went, ba ding. And it yeah. was like, hey, there's a new video of this cool thing. And there's this unicorn thing that went out. And, and maybe a bit of news and, and something. It's Mighty cool Car Mods, by the way. Not Unicorn Circuit, that other show that we make. The one that is far superior. But if you're interested, we're going to flush up a link. You can click it. You can add your email if you want. We're not going to send you spam. We're absolutely not going to give your email to other people. That's just 
No. That's just a dick move. But that's there's a link down in the thing that you can click and join us. the thing and we're going to send you some stuff. And maybe the first one, Martin, we do some something free yep. or something yep. hectic. Sure. There's some code in there, yep. um, jizzwangle or some other code word that we come <laughs> up with. And when they put that in there, they're going to get something free or some discount just to get it going. Tinfoil hat cat, Martin, bring it on. What All do right. you got for the us? Con the conspiracy, do we need to check distance? No. We're no, good. no, we're good. The conspiracy this week is that <laughs> AI and self-driving cars is a ploy by the tech companies to um, turn us into slaves. To enslave us, like the Terminator. Yep, the AI and self-driving cars is the tip of a very big technology iceberg. Why do they want to enslave we us? We are teaching, wait, for, that doesn't matter. This is not, that's not how conspiracies work, dude. Okay. It's not about the I why. Like it's the only thing that It's matters. about the what. No, it's about the what, man. Okay. You just got to throw these ideas out there. There's All even right. words for it. I, I'm just going to read you a little quote here. The most prevalent version of this conspiracy indicates that the advent of AI self-driving cars is being done for the evil purposes to harm humanity. It's been undertaken by powerful conspirators that are purposely seeking to subjugate humans to AI. First, I'll take over our cars, we'll lose the ability to drive a car, which would kind of suck a bit, and we'll become dependent upon AI for our mobility. We won't be able to get around without the use of AI, and when that happens, AI will grow from there step by step, and it will ultimately become sentient, and we humans will become its slave. There you go. That's apparently the thing. That sounds like a whole lot of bullshit. You know why? Because I've driven a Tesla with self-driving. That taken ain't taken over shit. <laughs> it's taken over. It's taken over guttering wheels, yeah. and it's taken over running into shit. And allegedly, look, this is just the experience that I had. It's look, it's freaking amazing. This technology that we're developing for self-driving cars, and I think there's very much a place for it. Imagine an old person who can't drive anymore. They need to go get help, go to the doctors, get around, you know, have a good, interesting life, get some sunshine, whatever. Jump in a little box, takes them somewhere. I think that's great. That's, that's great. That's awesome. We are not there yet. But as we soon as that happens, Martin, yet. they're going to turn it into service industry. As I've always said, if you're not driving a car, there'll be rolling brothels. You get in, you get a trip from here to Wollongong, and you get a massage on the way, kind of a thing. Do you know? What I'm like, yeah. they, or there's going to be an accountant in one, or some guy making your stir fry, or some yeah. person, a clairvoyant, telling you that you're an idiot. You know, like that or we, kind of or stuff. Or what's proven with the fact that everyone's staying home at the moment is maybe you won't have to go anywhere. Maybe you won't. Maybe you don't need to as much as you Maybe there'll you be a big funnel on the side of your house and there'll be a big button like this. And when you put on your bat signal, suddenly your Uber Eats food arrives and the guy rings a bell and there's a funnel and outside he sticks it in a fruit blender and nah, like that. And you just you, <laughs> you strap a little thing over your mouth that's kind of like a like flange a but made of rubber. With a elastic band around it. <laughs> like this. Hold on. Like, like this, right? This. This is connected to a pipe like that. And outside your house, the like Uber this. Eats guy, like yeah, this. yeah, like this. And outside the Uber Eats guy, that's coming through your house like that, right? And then there's a bike pump sitting there, and he whizzes up the stuff, puts the food in, and just starts pumping, and it fills up the pressure, and it's just blasting plugs of food. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and that's it. How do we get, do you know from, I mean? how do we get from AI and self-driving? Because to... ultimately, a person still is going to have to pump it into your mouth. And look, if, you're si if you don't want to go somewhere in your self-driving car, don't plug it in. <laughs> um, Martin, just do this. Oh. Uh, so that's, that all Martin, conspiracy is a big load of bullshit. No one is organised enough to do that. See, the, a lot of things that people that believe that, that people are lizards and that there's these, these... Who are the other people? The Illuminati and stuff like that. The problem with that stuff is that there has to be a huge group of people that is somehow centrally organised and everybody buys the same... The, yep. the same rationale, the same yep. philosophy, and everyone's going, no one will know about it, let's just do it. But eventually what happens with power is that somebody says, I want change. And they break out, they become oppositional. Yep. They try and, well, government tries to keep everything the same, yep. the opposition tries to change it. Yep. People who are already in power try and keep things the same. Yep. But ultimately by enslaving people and turning us into drones, then we're not going to come up with creative stuff that starts companies and businesses that ultimately feeds heaps of tax money and dollars back into the economy. It's just not going to happen. It doesn't work. If you, want to read, if you want to read more about this, um, there's a really good site called AI Trends, which is like, I think, some kind of industry body that talks about it. But what's great is there's big theories on conspiracy theories, as in the theory of, the academic theory of how they work and how they can be deconstructed and how you can basically work out that they all operate on the same thing just to put, pull at people's fears and the unknown and all that kind of crap to make up crap, which is interesting, which is why we put it on this segment of the show basically to highlight how freaking stupid it is, but have a look at some of the theory behind it. You might educate yourself as to why conspiracies always seem to follow a pattern. That's right. That's right. Now, can we take it from here to here we absolutely and just can. get to oh, photos of people it. holding sausages <laughs> and sexual innuendos that are incredibly juvenile? Can we just get straight into 
um, the thanking. Thanking is the delightful art of recontextualizing a product's name by taking a photo of it down near your crotch straight up. <laughs> yes, boom, look, we've it's got surprise. thanks. It's just thanks, it's sugar oh, free. Thanks. It's F A N G K S. I thanking don't even know how you pronounce that. Thanking is good for you. Um, but Martin, that should be our code word of the day thanks. F A N G K S. Because anyone that didn't get this far is like, you spelt it wrong. Oh, yeah. But they didn't get here. So, and code word get... of the day F A N G K S. And they'll get rock jobbed. I don't know what that means. Martin, here's a double one, munchy pot. Look at that. <laughs> they've, done, they've done two packets. I always like when I see a little bit of that. I do believe they're pounds in the background. Their chocolate is £1.50. That's still like $3.20 That's here. expensive. Oh, because same. in Australia, isn't a Mars bar like $2 or, or a dollar? But that's at a supermarket. You know what? The one thing, you can go around the world, chocolate, usually about the same. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, that's not even chocolate, is it? Because it doesn't have cocoa in it or something, by definition, or maybe it is. Anyway, what do we got, Martin? Martin, this is Dick's peanut butter. And what's interesting about this guy is he's not only given us a picture of the fank, he's given us a demonstration uh, of what you do with it. Oh. Uh, which is interesting, so I thought I would enjoy Oh, that's a bit too personal for me. It's a bit got, isn't it? Uh, Martin, next up, time. anus simplicity. <laughs> you, you, don't need to make, you don't need to make it complex. Keep it simple. Martin, explosive mixture. There it is. There's a picture of a endless. lovely young lady it's on the front there. Endless. Martin Squirty Cream. There it is. Well, that's, uh, just, that's it does exactly what it says what on the it is. label. Yeah, I like it when it does what it says it does on the box. A lady garden, Martin. You get in and have a trim. Why do they need to be pink people? Come on, it's 2020. I don't know. Martin, this is a clam rimmer. I don't know. Why well, isn't that Fank of the Week? That's excellent. That's, I don't know what you do You must with have that. a good Fank of the Week to have. And I don't know what country in, but I can tell you in Australia, a product called Clam Rimmer would never make it onto the shelves. No. It just wouldn't do it. Mm -mm. Um, I'd like to try it. Can someone send us some Clam Rimmer? No. I'd do like not to send us Clam Rimmer. Please do. No, I'll no. call you out oh by name. God. On the show, P.O. Box 475, Sydney Markets 2129. Send it to the Unicorn no, Circuit. Clam Rimmer. Clam Rimmer. If you send it to us, I'm going to legit say thank you to John and Mary for sending me the Clam Rimmer. I'll hold what do we up. do I'll with the other up. 17 packs that we get of it? Can one of you just send it? No, no, everyone. Martin, nut spinner. Look at that. <laughs> it's like a helicopter, but with balls, a bicopter. <laughs> Look at that. It's like a helicopter with balls. That's a perky pecker. There you go. That's probably good. That's pretty good. Martin, down here, nut after nut after nut. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Martin, what have we got here? <laughs> Just large and thick. Now, I put this one in because, is that you? No. It looks like you. Dude, look at the pants he's wearing. Yeah, he's kind of wearing That's festy. That's not me. Festy. It looks like your kind of shoes, your watch and your gloves. A little bit. I don't wear gloves. Don't you? Except for that time. That's true. Next up, what have we got? Martin, this is anal rum. Imagine that. That's that's very dangerous, actually. You should <laughs> never... That, actually, I'm not even going to talk about it no. give people an idea. But well, it, we have to think of the week, yeah. It can be fatal. Um, so don't. Because all the cringe of everyone needs to release their cringe. If you're going to consume alcohol, do it via your mouth. Uh, Martin, all right, next up. Oh, this is the first fank of the week. Oh, is it? Two. All right, boom, fank of the week. It's a Heinz. It's fresh cock sauce, Martin. We get there cock it is. sauce all the time. Well, that's well, not fank of the week. Then. I don't. We've seen that cock sauce so many times. There's I... one thing we have seen a lot every time we do this is cock sauce. <laughs> cock sauce, cock sauce, cock sauce. It's everywhere. It goes everywhere, as you know. And look, it's just, it's always on your computer. Okay. Martin, full I'm of cock to... sauce. I'm not Constantly to... full of cock sauce. It is. Martin. It's the most common <laughs> fank ever is cock sauce. I've never seen cock sauce before. Yes, you it have. It sounds like your experience. You have. Someone go through and find all the, watch the 81 unicorn circuits. I know, oh, 81 of them. Can you believe it? That's Martin. like 81 hours. If you've got nothing to do, Dig out the cock sauce. Martin, can you please give us a drum roll? Get the cock sauce out and tell us the time codes of the cock sauce. Can you give us a drum roll, please? All right. Actual thank of the week this week. It's a dick keeper. Well done. What do you do with it? You keep things in it. Now, we'd love to see your thanking. Would of we? Of course, you can really? send them. Yes, would we? We would love to see your woody thank. Um, you can send it to... Actually, don't send it anyway. We've got a Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash thanking daily. Someone else started a thanking group that's not even us, and it says, this is not Mighty Carmels. Why'd they do that? I don't Why'd know. Why'd they call it the thanking? It's fun. I love that thanking, which you invented. Well, we invented no, it. Invented. I just gave it a name. Okay. Yeah, well, we invented thanking, and then you named it thanking, like, over a decade ago. And then it's like, this is a new thing called thanking. It's like, no, mate. 
Yes. Anyway, so there's a very a naughty. But if you're group watching, on there. well done. That's Facebook just turning pages in the groups. Why? I don't know. Yeah. Someone tell us why Facebook decided to turn all these pages that are out there into groups. Yeah, tell you us. had like Someone a page for your knows. band, and now it's a group instead. Yeah, why is you've that? got to start a group so? for your band instead of the page for your band. Love to know. Someone Martin, out there wants to know. Is that, have, we, have we got my towns this yeah, week? Yeah, 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 we, we do. Got, okay, we let's, my let's dive into my town. My town is the excellent, most excellent part of the unicorn circuit. Will you take us to your town? Now, interestingly, this week, we're going, Where are we to going Martin? somewhere that you already mentioned. Now, this legend, whose name is Nuri, sorry if I didn't pronounce your name last time, you sent us a Supra for a MyCrap car. So this Nuri is one of the best top unicorn circuit people ever, I reckon. Is he? Because he's sent one of each man. Has he? He's gone out there, he's put his time and effort into making this cool video so all of us and all of you can enjoy it. And Nuri this time is taking us around his town, which is where, where you're not allowed to eat kebabs while you drive. Oh, in Cyprus. Cyprus. Which is amazing. I would love to have a look at it. Just before we roll the video, what I do want to say, I know a lot of people are hanging at home because they're in isolation because of this COVID madness. Send us a little video, point it out your window. We'd love to do a little collection of what you're up to. Have you started a new hobby? Are you doing something cool? Let us know what's going on. If it's not too rude, we might share it. It doesn't anyway. have to be long. You can send us a small one. Or 30 put a, seconds. We'll put a few of them together. Like whatever. Look, look at this, guys. I learned how to make a chocolate cake. Can you look, like, put it down? It's like, that's actually a strawberry donut. Do we wood, don't care. Do wood turning or something. Like, whatever. Just show us. It's cool. All show right, let's to. dive into Cyprus. Hello, Unicorn Circuit. This is Nuri again. You might remember me from a couple of episodes back with the Toyota Sora, my crap car. Now today I'll be showing you around Cyprus. I wanna give you a quick history lesson. From the 1500s till the 1800s, 1878, Cyprus was under the Ottoman Turkish Empire. In 1878, because the Turks owed the British a lot of cash, it was rented out like a property in one night but from 1878 until the First World War it was rented then First World War British said to the Ottomans and took the island and until 1960s in 1960 uh, British set up a republic for the major two ethnic ethnicities around the island uh, took army bases and left I mean I love the British people. My wife is British. Love you, Leah. But, you know, British Empire, or all the empires, tend to take what they want and disappear uh, when they're done. And from that 1960 to 1974, um, Greeks and the Turks started killing each other a lot. I mean, there's been mass murderings and stuff. Uh, they even killed each other them, them themselves within themselves. Uh, so uh, the Greeks decided to kill their own president in 1974, then Turkish came and they, they, like, they divided the island into two. Right now there's a Turkish Cypriot state at the, in the north and uh, Republic of Cyprus or Greek Cypriot administration in the south. So I'll, I'm telling, I'm giving you this information from the northern side, and technically I don't exist. So around the population counts around the world, all the global figures, we're not included. Um, even the coronavirus figures that's been recently uh, announced, we are not included. We're not allowed to participate in any sporting events, any Olympics, or any, uh, like we're not allowed to sell anything, we're not, we, we, we are isolated. So here comes the non-existing Northern Cyprus. And that's a really interesting church right there because it was converted to a mosque uh, during the 15, 1600s. And Nicosia used to be a walled city, walls built by the Venetians. And I served my compulsory army service, which was 12 months, uh, right top of the top of the mountain, top of the walls. There's the walls on the other side, emptiness, there's the gate, and there's the wall on the other side. And this is the actual walled city. You can see like the amazing architecture of the buildings right on the left. And I'll show you a great cathedral, which was actually modeled after the Notre Dame in Paris. Boom, there it is. Yeah, it's epic. 
There's a Turkish flag there, there's a short road, an army base, and you can see the Greek flags right there. Greece and the Republic of Cyprus. I've been in that army base, it's the worst place you'll ever go. There is one, two, three crossing points around Nicosia to go to the Greek side, and this is one of them, you can see. This is from the north side, the back side is the yellow building is the United Nations, which is controlled by the British. It's a historic hotel, Leader Palace. And you go straight there, you show your ID card, and you go to the south side. And here it is, the city of Kyrenia. The Kyrenia Castle, right next to it. This is the best place on earth. I kid you not. This is the town of Bella Pais. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll try to be your impartial tour guide. If you ever come to Cyprus, please come visit both sides. Cyprus is way too awesome to uh, show you around for uh, in a five minute clip. So please do come visit Cyprus. Thanks Yuri, that's awesome man. Thanks for showing us around Cyprus. Looks awesome, wanna go there. Walled cities, man. Amazing. We don't have walled cities here. Nope. We don't. Nope. We don't. There's no walls around them. Nope. What's next? Is it time for uh, a random meet? My town at theunicornsocket.com. Send it in. Martin, we got a lot of mail. People have been sending us all sorts of mail. Yeah. So it's time to jump into story time slash mailbag. Okay. Each week on the show, you guys send us all sorts of stuff. We're going to start opening it. There's a lot of stuff down here to get through, so we're just going to dive in. I'm opening one up here that is from Joe Iaquinto. And Joe, thank you very much for sending whatever this is. I've well, got I shouldn't thank you yet because I don't know what it is. Christopher Bruin. Dude, I you got a couple of t-shirts here, Martin. Sick cars. I got a couple of t-shirts here. Yeah. And this is, oh, I, I haven't cool. even seen it yet. It says, Church Street Special. <laughs> that's actually awesome. Look at that. That's unreal. And there's a few in that? here. Is that an E30? I think it's an E30 with a big front mount in it. It looks really cooler. cool. And a little oil cooler on the front. That's sick. Thank you very much for sending that in. Christopher Thank you. Bruin. Very cool. Christopher Bruin. Oh, there's a note. I like it when there's a note. I like when there's a note. Oh, cool. He sent us a picture of his Honda. Hi, Megan Marty. Just giving you the gift of the appreciation on what you guys do for your entertainment. We at yours have stuck in for the long haul and we all appreciate it. You bring out humorous content and make us all feel good. Thanks, man. Um, you give us lots of tips along the way, but here's all your funny sayings. Thanks again. Hope you like the gift. My appreciation gives it to you from Christopher Bruin. Dude, that's very nice of you. Thanks, man. He's from Moralia. And he oh, sent us cool. some sick. Yes. Oh, dude, Japan Historics. Sylvia. Oh, yeah. For you. Oh, bro, look at that 85 Honda City Turbo. Oh, there's one each. Amazing. Oh, the Skyline RS, original Skyline RS. That's mad. Thanks. That's going in a little collection that we've got sitting next to the. What's over there? 240Z and some other that's cool amazing. stuff. That's amazing. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Christopher. That's very generous, mate. I've Appreciate got something it. here from Daff Renmark. Civic. Martin, and now there's nothing in here but something soft, so I wasn't sure what was going on. But I'm just sticking my finger into this before I bring it out. Chopped! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! What is that? That is finger hands, they call it. Chopped finger hands. Thank you very much for... Thank you very much for sending that in. <laughs> Martin, do you want to crack that one open? Yeah, do you do. need a knife? Thanks. There you go, mate. All right, this there's still from... a few down here. We're not going to get through all of them. Martin, this one here is from Cletus Gray. Cleet... Gray, Greg. Greg, Greg Clements. Anyway, <laughs> this one here has come from, this has come from overseas. This has come from the US, from, from the US. United States. Oh, it's Clements. All right, let's have a look. Let's see what we've got in here. Oh, there's something cool going on. Oh, what have we got here, Martin? I'll read the letter first. I love it when people make stuff. This is so cool. <laughs> Hi, here's an invention that awesome. I came up with to fix the problem of storing plier type tools. Nothing worse than a drawer full of pliers and screwdrivers jumbled together. They get lost, broken, or simply forgotten about. I was yeah. encouraged by Adam Savage's initiative to get rid of drawers, so after some time looking at plier storage options, I came up with this thing. The design allows the tip of every tool to be visible and it presents one of the handles of easy access. That's really cool. Oh, that's and then clever. there's a little instructional that he's put together of how to make it. I'm going to put that together later. Oh, and he's customised it. Look at this. Oh, dude, Clement that is so cool. Custom creations. And on the side, it says... <laughs> that's just awesome. 
It says Mighty Car Mods. Look at that. That's rad. Thank you. That's awesome. We're going to put that together. Thank this, you so much. This That's is unreal. awesome too. So this is from... That's really cool, man. This is from Thanks Liz. So much. I don't have like a, a last name. But anyway, this is from Liz. It says, read first. Dear Marty and Moog, my husband enjoys watching your show and therefore I've also come to enjoy it over time. <laughs> he won you over. Um, even if he needs to explain the car stuff. I thought it'd be a great idea to make you a tinfoil hat cat. Oh, what? It wasn't, but it, it wasn't, but now it exists for you. It's really more of a possum, but I think the truly paranoid stare helps. I've enclosed his hat. Thanks for giving us loads of quality free content to watch together. No worries. Look at this, dude. It's a conspiracy hat cat. What? With a chopped logo on it. Oh, she made it. Ori that made, made it. And look, it's got a tinfoil hat. Oh my gosh. Yeah, dude. We'll get a close-up we'll of this in a minute. We'll get some close-ups. Oh, you actually put the hat on? Hold on, I'll hold it. You can put it on. Sideways. These are my favourite. These are my favourite. No, it goes the other way over its ears. Yeah, dude. That is Conspiracy incredible. hat cat. That, Full custom with a chopped logo that on its back. That is. That's one of my favourite things ever. That is amazing. I don't know amazing. why. I mean, it's a bit weird. And it does look like a possum that's had too much um, eucalyptus oil. I love that. But it's... Um... Thank you very, very much. <laughs> that's, sick. that's amazing. Martin, there's more down there, but I think we need to move it on. So um, let's just uh, let's finish this shot. We've got random eat bag, uh, and let's, let's randomly eat something out of a bag. Each week on Random Eat Bag, we try and expand our minds by expanding our mouths. We've got this bag here, which has got a choco pie in it. There you go, Martin. You can enjoy that. No, you um, should. Here's one I prepared no, earlier. I'm on, actually man. eating some BC I'm not eating a green smoky tea barbecue. Wait, whoa, 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 hold up. Did what? you just give me a green tea choco pie and then you've got beef jerky? Well, no, I'm just, I thought that you would like to try that. Well, I have the uh, BC Jerky, handcrafted, small batch. Mmm. How is it? I'm not eating that. Why not? That's grot. Give me the jerky. No, I touched it. Is there any more? You don't want to eat this, do you? Is there any more? Do you really want some? Yeah. <gasps> Are you sure? Oh, you didn't. What? Where's, is there any more? Yeah, there's a whole packet for Where's, Is there another packet? <gasps> Can you check? Oh, yes! There you go. All right, that's the show. Thank you for oh, watching. Oh, did I got chilli beef jerky? Like we said, it was just going to be a quick one today. Small batch, 100% uh, Aussie grass-fed beef made in Sydney. Hell thank yeah. Thank you very much, everyone, Cracked for pepper. watching the show. Bring that on. I hope you're staying oh, safe. Oh, do you know what would be good? I hope you're doing okay. You know what would be good? A teriyaki one. Mm -hmm. How good is teriyaki jerky? Amazing. Um, All right, thank chilli. You. Thanks for watching the show. We hope you're staying safe. We hope we've managed to entertain you. Mm. So you're going to be seeing the MR2 get thrashed by the moon buggy very soon? Probably not. Probably. Well, soon you'll see it, but you won't see the moon buggy trash MR2, I don't reckon. Anyway, that's happening soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ian Gonzo, for another week. Fast. Stay safe, stay awesome. Got good time. Are you a nurse? You a doctor? You helping out? Police, army, teachers, first responders? Thank you very much. Because thanks to you Appreciate that we can still make shows like this and then people can enjoy them at home. So <laughs> thank you for all the work you're doing. And see you next time Goodbye on the Unicorn yourself, Circuit. Bye bye.